And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alan Liu. Um, I'm currently a postdoc at Carnegie Mellon University, and I'm incoming assistant professor at Boston University. And, and my research is trying to do network uh, systems and particularly network computing. Today, I'm very happy to introduce Jiarong Xing, who is a second year PhD student at Rice University. And he has done amazing and very interesting work on network system security. Jiarong, please. Uh, hi, I'm Jiang Xing. Uh, thanks, Alan, for the introduction. Um, today, I will talk about the networking, mitigating network core channels while preserving performance. Suppose you have a file server that stores very confidential information. For example, the launch code for them. Unfortunately, the server has been compromised by a malicious software and it tries to send the launch code to the attacker in the outside. One straightforward way is to put the launch code into a packet payload and send the packet to the attacker. However, the server could have a firewall to inspect the packet payload and prevent such a packet. An alternative way is to send a normal TCP packet with launch code encoded in the packet header field. Since the packet payload is innocent, the firewall will allow it. This is called core story channels, which leaks the secret by changing packet header fields. The attacker could also leak data by manipulating the timing of packets. For instance, using large gaps to encode one and use small gaps to encode zeros. This is called core timing channel, which leaks secrets by changing the packet timing. Our work aims to mitigate both of them. Core channels are a long-standing problem. People began to report core channels about 50 years ago. And a lot of existing work has shown that core channels can leak data over long distance effectively. Besides, major security standards require protection against them. The state-of-the-art story channel defenses are header inspection plus per packet header operation running in the software. Let's look at the TCP header story channel. To mitigate it, we can replace the header field with a new value, say by plusing two. In this way, the receiver cannot see the correct information included in the header. So operation here is very simple. But the problem is we need to repeat it for every packet for terabits per second traffic. So software-based solutions are very inefficient. Now let's look at timing channel. To detect the core timing channels, people usually use statistic-based uh, tests to look for specific deviations. For example, normal traffic will only have one peak. But for malicious traffic, because the attacker uses large and small gaps to input data, it can have two peaks. One note here is that the statistical text are not always accurate. It may have false positive. After detecting core timing channels, we can inject a random delay to destroy the original timing of the flow. Although this method could mitigate the core channel effectively, it incurs actual delay, which means it will increase the latency of a TCP connection and thus reducing its throughput. In summary, existing defenses incur performance penalty, which comes from two aspects. First, their detections are inefficient. Per packet inspection is required by core channel detection. And the existing detection running in software cannot keep up with the terabits per second traffic. Second, their mitigations incur performance loss. Adding random delay to each packet increases the latency of a connection and thus reduces its throughput. Also, the false positive because of the inaccurate detections will cause collateral damage on legitimate connections and decrease the performance of them. So here, we ask a key question. Can we mitigate the current channels while preserving performance? We answer this question with yes by proposing our system, Network. 
Networking is a performance preserving core channel defense, which could be deployed on a core switch. Look at this figure. Networking is in the middle of the server and the user. It tracks all passing through traffic to detect and then mitigate both story channels and timing channels in real time. The key feature of networking is that it can defend against core channels while preserving performance. In networking, we propose a key principle, hardware software co-design, and apply it to address two key challenges in this work. We use programmable switch, default switch, to achieve an efficient core channel detection. We use performance boosting to implement a performing preserving core channel medication. Now, I have talked about our motivation mitigating network core channels the limitation of existing approaches, performance penalty, and then give a high-level picture of our approach. Next, I will talk about networking design in the detail. I will first talk about the pain principle of hardware software co-design. It is a generic principle that is applicable to many people applications. In this talk, I will apply it to build an efficient core channel defense. Networking is built upon the recent proposed people switches that can program with high-level languages. A P4 switch has two layers, the data plan and the control plan. The data plan is programmed for ASICs. It can do header modification, it can maintain per flow state, and it provides normal section level time steps, which can be used to calculate the interpacted delays. And the data plan can run at line speed. However, data plan has very limited memory and it can only do simple mass computations. The control plan, on the other hand, is a general purpose CPU. It has a bounty memory and it can do complex mass calculation. However, the control plan can only run at a software speed. So as we can see, the data plan and the control plan are complementary with each other. In networking, we use both of them to build an efficient defense. Considering the pros and cons of the data plan and the control plan, in networking, we propose the principal way to assign tasks into the data plans and the control plan. The data plan can run at line speed. So if a task requires per packet operation, it should be in the data plan. And since the memory of data plan is limited, so it should only maintain constant state. Patch operations, which do not require line speed, can run in the control plan with software speed. And the control plan have abundant memory. So if, one, if we want to maintain states of which the size grows with time, we should implement it in the control plan. Now, our tasks are spread across the data plan and the control plan. So they need, they need to talk with each other. Because the bandwidth between the data plan and the control plan is not infinite, so we should also minimize the crosstalk between the data plan and the control plan. Now let's look at the roadmap of the core channel defenses. To defend against core timing channel, we first compute the interpacted delay, namely IPD. Then we run statistical text over those IPDs so that we can compute, we can compare the IPD distributions with normal flows. Then for detected suspicious flows, we add a random delay to each packet by caching to destroy the original IPDs. Finally, we have performance booster to boost the performance and all these operations are running with a flow level state. So we should also maintain a per flow state. For story channel, it mainly requires header modification. Then we also have performance booster and we need to maintain a per flow state. Now we have a task leaks and a programmable switch. How to assign those tasks to the switch according to our principle? Let's look at them one by one. IP, IPD computation and the header modifications are per packet operation, so they should be done in the data plan. Statistical tasks are batch operations and they require complex mass calculations, so they should be done in the control plan. Packet delaying requires a lot of memory and the state is growing with time, so it should be in the control plan. Performance poster 
and we'll talk about it later, will require practical caching. So it is also in the control plan. For preferable state maintaining, it only requires constant state, so it can be implemented in the data plan. Finally, we should also minimize the crosstalk between the data plan and the control plan. Then we apply the principle to build networking. The first challenge is to build an efficient detection. We we'll address this challenge by using people's switches and applying our hardware software to define. Now let's look at the detail. Our first step is to compute IPD. People's switches provide nanoseconds level time steps. So it can be calculated by using the time steps of the current packet minus the time steps of the last packet. As I showed you in the roadmap, the next step is to do statistical tags or IPDs. Because the statistical tags are running in the control plan, so we need to send IPDs to the control plan. But should we send all IPDs directly to the control plan? According to our code design principle, no, we should minimize the crosstalk. Networking minimizes the crosstalk based on our observation that most of the traffic are normal. We should, we should have a method to fill out normal traffic and only send the special traffic to the control plan. In networking, we use the pre-check in the data plan to distinguish the special traffic. To do the pre-check, we need to cache IPDs in the data plan. As I told you, the data plan has limited memory. So the first problem is how to store IPDs in a memory efficient manner. Our solution is IPD internalization. Instead of storing exact IPDs, we store IPD into a counter. For example, we have a counter for IPD from 0 to 10, a counter from 10 to 20, and so on. With there is IPD, we check which range the IPD is and then increase the corresponding counter. For example, if the IPD is 8, we will increase the first counter. Even with IPD internalization, we still need to mod maintain multiple counters for each flow. So the memory consumption is still not uh, acceptable. Our next question is how to reduce per flow memory consumption. The solution is IPD sketching. We maintain a coming sketch in the data plan to store IPDs for all flows. A coming sketch is an approximate data structure that trade off per flow accuracy, accuracy for space saving. Now, all IPDs of all flows have been maintained in the uh, data plan, we, now we can do the pre-check. The high-level intuition of the pre-check is that for normal flows, it could only have one peak and that the IPD is very small. But for suspicious traffic, because the attacker uses large and small caps in your data, you can also, it, it, could also, it could have two peaks and the half of the IPDs are large. Our pre-check will counter the number of large IPDs of each flow and the mark the flow as suspicious if it reaches out the threshold. Then the IPDs of a suspicious flow will be sent to the control plan for further check. After receiving IPDs, the control plan performs statistical tasks and uh, add random delays by catching packets to those suspicious flows. Note that the injected delays incur actual delay to the connection I will, and uh, thus reducing the uh, connection throughput. I will talk about this point very soon. Our second challenge is to design a performance preserving defense. Before I talk about the solution, let's look at why we have a performance problem. The high level idea of TCP is that the sender sends a batch of packets to the receiver. The receiver sends, a back, sends back an act package to indicate that data has been received, and then the sender sends the next batch. However, when we apply core channel defense, it will incur some extra delay. So, from the perspective of the sender, it perceives a larger IPP. Thus, the next packet is sent out later than before. From the perspective of the receiver, the packet arrives later than before. So compared with no defense, in a certain amount of time, the receiver receives fewer packets than before, which means the throughput is decreased. We address the challenge by temporarily boosting TCP performance of the connection to neutralize the performance penalty. We have two posters in networking, the act poster, which generates act, uh, act packets in advance, and the resist window size poster. 
because of time limitation, I will only talk about act poster. We can read out paper for the detail of the other one. The act poster networking will pretend to be the receiver and generate act packet to the server periodically. From the perspective of the sender, the ITT is shorter. So it sends out the next packet earlier than before. This will neutralize the actual delay incurred by the defense. And finally, the packet will arrive at the same time in the uh, receiver side. Therefore, the act poster boosts the performance by creating an illusion of a shorter uh, latency as perceived by the sender. To put it in, in another way, networking works as a TCP proxy. For normal flow, networking directly sends their traffic to the user. But for malicious flow, networking uh, communicates with the server, catches the packets, and sends it to the user. If there is a packet loss between the user and the networking, it will be recovered from the cache in the network. Put, put them together, we get a full picture of networking. We have timing channel detection, storage of defenses in the data plan. We have connection manager, um, statistical attacks, and packet buffering in the control plan. And we also minimize the crosstalk between the data plan and the control plan. I will talk about the principle of hardware software code design and how we use it to address the two challenges. Next, I will show you the evaluation result of networking. We developed a networking prototype which runs in barefoot to final switch. Uh, it has 2,500 lines of, of P4 code and 3,000 lines of uh, C plus Python code. We assume there's an attacker who wants to leak an ISA key recorder channel and the, the attacker has compromised the server, but the P4 switch running network is trusted. We use web search workload to do the experiment. We also build a baseline solution that does not have performance boosting. We first evaluate the, how effective is networking in core channel medication. The FX here is IPD magnitude and the Y axis is the decoding rate. As we can see, when there's no defense, the decoding rate can reach 100% as the IPD, when the IPD is 800 microseconds. After applying naive defense, it renders the decoding rate to a random task. And for networking, it's very close to the naive defense. So networking can mitigate core channels effectively. Next, we evaluate the whole wheel does networking present performance. The X is a time, the Y axis is sending rate of a connection. When there's no defense, the sending rate of the connection is about 15 megabits per second. After applying naive defense, it incurs 25% performance penalty. But the networking only has 1%. We repeat the experiment 1,000 times and draw the CDF figure of the flow completion time. As we can see, the CDF of networking is very close to no defense. So networking can mitigate the core channels with minimal performance loss. There are more experiments we need to evaluate networking, like the scalability and overhead. Please see more details in the paper. Next, I will conclude, summarize and conclude the talk. We are motivated by mitigating network core channels. We found the existing approaches have performance penalty. To address that, we design networking. We propose the principle for hardware software code design and apply it to address two challenges. Our evaluation result shows that networking can mitigate core channels with minimal performance loss. Thank you for listening, and uh, I'm welcome to take any questions. And thank you very much for the talk and a very interesting topic. So one, one general question to me when I think this, I think it's um, the core channel attack is a very valid threat to the current internet. I think the networking, especially the emerging programmable networking devices programmed by P4 is definitely a very promising solution to mitigate such attacks. But a meta question is the why uh, you pick programmable switch as a, solution as, as your, your target. So we have a bunch of programmable uh, networks in, 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 in uh, uh, network data plans. Then we have a bunch of new devices, smart NICs or a PGA, et cetera. So why do why you think the programmable switch is the best uh, solution, given that you, in your presentation, you have a design that you have to split 
some tasks into the hardware, some tasks actually in the CPU, which is software based. So how you consider this? Okay. So the question is why we choose P4 switch as a target to deploy uh, or to develop a networking. Um, um, in our in our scenario, uh, we deploy the networking in the Tor, in the Tor switch, which means the Tor switch is a, a P4 switch. So um, if we deploy the networking in the Tor switch, then uh, the system is transparent to the uh, to the server. So we don't want to mm -hmm. make any modifications or changes to the existing uh, deployed uh, applications or deployed services in the server. So if we if we do that in the core switch, um, it's totally transparent to the uh, to the server. I see. Uh, it's uh, understandable. But what if the server you want to protect has a has a nick that with uh, with for example has some multi engine CPU or has some a PGA? They in the future maybe they also can be pro programmed by P4. Um, then how? How do you think it's a different? Because I think that could be even more flexible in that sense. So what's uh, the advantage of that there? Um, I, I think you can, uh, in this work, we deploy network in the P4 switch. But as you mentioned, uh, an increasing number of smart links that are deployed in the data center. And I think it's, uh, it's also a good way to deploy part of the application into the smart links. And the smart link connected with the server the smart link can directly check the traffic and uh, um, to detect uh, and make the core channels. Um, the advantage of uh, using smart links, maybe you can deploy a uh, fine grained uh, defenses because uh, each each server has, has its own detection policies uh, compared with the Tor switch. But uh, Tor switch has its own advantages, like it's easy to compare, uh, to, to manage, to manage uh, you manage the you update the core switch, you can um, update the policy, the detection policy for the whole server in this cluster. Okay, so it's actually trying to be easier to up be updated. You'd have to do the per server update in this sense. And um, so I think in, in, your, in your work trying to um, implement this uh, mitigation, you also have a detection phase, right? So I think you, yes. you briefly mentioned that you do the detection from my yes. understanding that your detection is relies on some probabilistic data structure to preserve right. the distribution of, yes, right. for example, the time interval of the packets, like, yeah. right? So between the packets. Yes. So um, I, the first assumption you make is that you, you make a lot of different buckets between, you know, different buckets of time intervals. You just draw, you know, put your packets or your interval into different buckets. And then that will be uh, approximately give you the, in the sense of the entire distribution. How, how does this, like, for example, what, what's your, the statistical property you are looking for? Are you looking for uh, entropy value? You are working for virus of or the, the distribution? Or what, what does this look like? How, 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 how this gonna affect um, your, your final results, right? So let's assume you have a, even, even a larger range of the, the intervals, what will be that? affect your, your accuracy of detection? Okay. Um, the idea we use coming sketch is that uh, the memory of a P4 switch is limited. So mm -hmm. we use uh, sketch to reduce the memory footprint. Um, the high level intuition of the pre-check is that the distribution of the suspicious traffic and the normal traffic is, are different. Normal traffic, uh, it has only one peak. You can regard it as a normal distribution and the Generally speaking, the um, interpacted delays are usually small, and uh, we observe them from our uh, experimental experiment. But for malicious traffic, because uh, you, the attacker needs to encode the data using large and small gaps, so you can observe two peaks in the distribution, and uh, half of the uh, IPD is, is, is larger, is uh, abnormal larger. So we use common sketch to, you know, to count the number of uh, large IPDs. If the number of large FDEs reach out a threshold, we mark the flow as the suspicious. Uh, as you mentioned, sketch is a probabilistic structure. It may have some false positive. Some uh, legitimate flow may be, may be marked as suspicious flow and sent to the control plan for further checking. 
but it's totally okay in that world because uh, later we will have a performance false team. So even if we have false positive, a legitimate flow is marked as a special flow, it doesn't matter, we don't hurt the performance of that. The performance poster will neutralize the performance penalty and uh, it just uh, as there's no defense at all. I see. Um, so in this sense, I think you largely rely on the channel between this programmable switch and the CPU attached as the controller. So that's actually, as I understand that, that channel is quite limited. I mean, in terms of bandwidth, in terms of computation power in, the, in that controller. So it seems like um, it will be some extreme cases that you, you're sending too much information to the CPU. How, how, how you control that? Um, how, how you claim that we, we would, so the, the slow pass you mentioned in your presentation will not affect the total performance by a lot. Okay. Mm, yes, if the data plan pre-check marks the flow as suspicious, it will send to the control plan. And the control plan is running on software speed, it's slow. If we send too much packets to the control plan, it will be overwhelmed, overwhelmed and uh, the control plan will be the bo bottleneck of the <coughs> of this whole system. The intuition uh, in, in networking, in the on the data plan, we will monitor the number of the malicious flows of the current system. You, as I mentioned, networking is deployed on the core, core switch and it mm -hmm. uh, the, the servers in this cluster. If we found too much or a great number of uh, flows are marked as suspicious, there would be some problem in this cluster. So networking will use an alarm for the network operator and the operator need to check the, you know, the, check the fundamental reason. So usually the number of malicious flow um, is small. If it's larger than a threshold, uh, it's larger than the capability of control plan to handle, networking will raise an alarm to the network operator. Yeah, so because the original design of such switch and the CPU architecture is the controller only have some very infrequent control for the switch and switch is handling at a line rate for you know, the packet processing. So mm -hmm. um, this is the original design as, uh, you know, uh, from a, a traditional switch. So from your perspective, when you try to design the security related approach for network and for network traffic, what, what do you think, you know, what can be, can be changed in this hardware and software design? What do you think it's uh, the best way to in, in, involve, um, to evolve in for, for the next generation of the network hardware in terms of this, um, this kind of workload for, for mitigation the network threats? <clears throat> yeah, um, in, in networking, uh, yeah, the current, current people uh, programming model, the switch model. Oh, or I can rephrase, is that the saying that maybe switch is not the ultimate solution for that? We probably need a bunch of different devices working yeah, to, yeah. together. But yeah. I think the ideal goal is that we should avoid software computation in, in controller as much as we can because it's not, no, no performance guarantee. And then you, you, you can also, you realize on, I, I think you also rely on for some packet cache, right? You also need to cache some packets. So I, I don't think it's a, it's a kind of a, a very scalable solution if you consider even not outside the rack of, you know, the top rack of servers, even in a multiple racks or even the core network, you are, you are facing a much more uh, pressure because the, usually this, the switch you're using is like, 3.2 terabits per second. It's uh, it's or even 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 higher speed in later that possibly mm -hmm. you support the multiple racks in, in future. Then um, mm -hmm. that seems like not very scalable solution. And then then other type of networking devices like let's say uh, FPGA, they are definitely more flexible, right? Some 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 um, some more more functionality can be implemented there. Let's say, and we don't need to rely on CPU. Is that the, maybe the, the, the way to, to, to address the drawback of network or, or trying to involve in the next generation? Or is saying maybe, maybe this smart next FPJ is not the right approach? Uh, uh, yeah, I think I, FPGA can be a good candidate to uh, address the bottleneck of the controller. After the people switch detect uh, mark the uh, suspicious flow, we can offload the a suspicious flow to FPGA device connected to the switch. Then the, 
the FPGA can cache package can inject actual delays to the uh, original packet timings so that we can mitigate the um, mitigate the cover channels. Um, also, also if we want to just a cache packets, we can also connect a persistent memory with the uh, you know uh, connected to the switch to provide a, a larger memory size to the data plan. Uh, yeah, I think there there are some uh, filter directions that we can do to address the bottleneck. Yes, and I'm particularly interested to hear, for example, when implementing NetWarden um, mm -hmm. using P4. So, mm -hmm. do you, so what kind of implementation challenge do you have faced? So, I, I think particularly in your presentation, I understand this bundle of bunch of design something we cannot do. So, can mm -hmm. you? Uh, Explain a little bit more about some implementation challenge you feel that you are interested to share. Uh, I I think a people uh, networking is a security application. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, the switch is used for network application for performance application. Uh, yeah. When you have uh, the network application is different from the security application because usually. Uh, security application is more complex. It requires more mass calculations, and uh, it requires it. so it requires more switch stages. So one problem, one challenge we we encountered when writing the P4 program or when we implement the P4 uh, the networking system is how to utilize the limited stages to implement a complex security application. Uh, our experiment is we need to do some optimization. To your code to try to fit the system into the data plan. So, what kind of can can I make it a quick example if it's um, um, straightforward? Uh, like to maintain the sketch, uh, to read from the sketch, we need to, for example, if you use three hash functions, we need to read calculate three hash functions, read three entries from the sketch, then we calculate the we calculate the mean minimum of the three values. Mm -hmm. This is very simple in the general purpose CPU, but in the uh, data plan, you need to, it will take several stages. But the total stages is uh, limited, like just the 12 stages. Uh, you also have other functionalities you need to implement in the data plan, so you need to consider how to utilize the, those 12 stages to implement in your security functions. I see. I see. And. Um... So, um, so you feel that uh, the stages being leveraged has to be um, in an efficient way to design an uh, algorithm you're running on it, and also, um, you know, for hardware that you you have such a limitation. You, uh, if you want to explain the functionality of network, then there is a new defense um, mechanism you have, you want to implement in 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 in, in preventing or mitigating those covert channel attacks. That um, you have to. Think about how to fit into that, right? So you actually, so may I know, like how how for 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 your your bunch of uh, mitigation for storage and timing. So mm -hmm. does it fit into one switch entirely? Um, it, it depends. It, it depends on how complex uh, complex of your of the of the defense, uh, and uh, there and also depends on the relationship of the operation. Sometimes the defenses. Has some shareable components like the common sketch or maintain the per flow state. If they have some shareable components, maybe you can you can implement more you know uh, defensive uh, together into one switch. But sometimes it reach out the limitation of the control plan. You have to do something uh, to to work work around this problem, like deploy different defenses into different pipeline, etc or do recirculation to let the packet to traverse the pipeline twice. I see. Very interesting, very interesting. I think, um, thank you so much again for uh, presenting such an interesting uh, security application running on top of uh, P4 switches. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your feedback and uh, good questions. <laughs>